This is Yuji from Jujutsu Kaisen, and he has a very interesting diet. I want to become strong just like Yuji, fast just like Yuji, but I am nothing like Yuji. My plan is then in order to build the muscle, the power, the speed, and whatever this is, is to spend the next seven days eating and training like Yuji, with the goal of becoming just like Yuji and winning an actual fight against Taekwondo experts, and fuel my body with everything that Yuji loves to eat. And so I jumped into my very first day of training to get ready for the next seven days. He's got to earn that white belt, man. And my instructor is Master DJ, a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. I'm Master DJ. I'm with US World Class Taekwondo. Whoa, let's go. Ready, go. Yeah. So for the next seven days to be as cool as those kids are and to be closer to Yuji, I have to train in the basics. Coach Dad had to come over to help me out quite a few times because I had no clue what I was doing. And as soon as warmups were over, we got right into it with kicking practice. So we're gonna go 10 here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Yuji is incredibly fast, and practicing these kicks like this made me feel a little bit like Yuji. But this is also something I've never done before, so I'll take all the advice I can get. Oh, Are you yeah. up on your form then? Okay. See, how, like, see how Marissa's doing it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just better. Yeah, just more comfortable that way. I had to learn three different kicks today, and this is only day one. See, he's got it. You can tell, you know what I mean? I think Master DJ was just being too nice here, especially when you compare my kicks to my sparring partner's kicks. Hi, my name's Cole. I've been training in Taekwondo for the past nine years since I was 10 years old, and my goal is to be an Olympian. Cole is who I'm training with all week and is someone that I actually have to fight at the end to earn my white belt. I have my work cut out for me, and after a solid hour of training on my first day, they'd made me try to do the splits. This wasn't happening. My mic had cut out for this part, so I'll recreate it for you. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And after a full hour of training, he wanted me to do a board break to get me super hyped up for the rest of the week. Three, two, one, break! Whoa! And I have to say, my first board break absolutely got me hyped up for the rest of the week. And just when I thought I was done, he handed me homework. I will see you tomorrow night, hopefully not battered and broken. <laughs> and after all of this, I still have to head back to the house to figure out how to meal prep like Yuji. So, how did it go? Everything hurts. The big problem is that it's 10 p.m. and I have nothing prepped for food for Yuji's diet. This is gonna be a fun week. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. I have to admit, after that training session last night, I am incredibly sore and I really hope that whatever we need to eat for Yuji helps refuel me for this entire week leading up to the tournament fight. So now I'm gonna figure out exactly how much Yuji needs to eat per day to fuel me for this entire week. Now, according to the internet, Yuji is 176 pounds. This means at five foot eight, he needs to eat 3,100 calories per day, which means about 190 grams of protein, 90 grams of fat, and 420 grams of carbohydrates. What this really means is we need to make and eat a ton of meatballs, so please bear with me as we meal prep for the entire week. To start things off, I need to make a bunch of carbohydrates. I'm using around four cups of rice to get started, and this may get me through the next couple of days. This is just short grain Japanese style white rice that I am washing until the water runs clear. Once I have my rice washed, I fill it to the first knuckle on your finger because that's what everybody should be doing. This is just gonna get thrown on the rice cooker. Now, with the rice cooker have sing the song of its people, we actually have to make meatball prep because that's gonna take the longest. And the rice cooker does take an hour to make rice so we can make our meatballs in the meantime. The kicker with this entire week is that just like the Ichigo diet, which I filmed quite a while ago with Chris Sensei, is that I'm going to be training multiple times throughout the day. So to be able to fuel that, I do have to eat quite a bit of food. And that's why I have about six pounds worth of ground chicken to make meatballs. Six pounds of chicken seems like a lot, but trust me, I'm gonna eat all of it. I'm only smelling this because I bought this on the cheap. This was two bucks. I think they said it was expiring. Doesn't smell bad. So I hope it doesn't go bad. Meal prep doesn't have to cost a lot, especially if you bargain shop. You should have got a bigger, I need a bigger thing. That's better. Now to this giant pile of chicken, I'm adding in three cloves of crushed garlic, followed by about a two inch piece of minced ginger. I tried crushing the ginger in the garlic press and it just didn't work. So I just ended up chopping it up with my knife. Throw that into the mixture along with two whole eggs. You also need a hefty amount of salt because this is so much chicken thigh. I'm gonna season it half now and then maybe add in more if I feel like I need it when we do a tester. 
After seasoning it, I get in there making sure everything is fully mixed together because no one wants flavorless meatballs, even though this looks like weird McDonald's paste. Now I am adding around one cup worth of panko breadcrumbs to help thicken this up just because I'm using it for meal prep over so many days. Anytime you make like a sausage or a patty or anything like that, you wanna make sure that you sample it just to make sure it's seasoned properly. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my chicken meat, place it into my pan, and we're just gonna cook this. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to like be perfectly moist or anything. We're really just cooking this for taste. I'm really only cooking this for a few minutes before I give it a flip and then cook the other side. This is when I can give it a taste. That's pretty spot on. Maybe just a touch more salt into the mixture. Let's see what that tastes like. Boom, beautiful. The ginger really comes through. Little hint of garlic, spiced nicely, perfect. We gotta portion out all of this. This is what we used to do in restaurants all the time when we had to make a big batch of meatballs for anything. Take two sheet trays, line them with plastic just to make your life easier later. It takes a while now, but it's gonna pay off later when lunch and dinner and whenever I have this is so much easier to put together. Take a giant amount of it in your hand, take a portion scoop. These things come in handy for so many things. This is about one ounce and I'm just gonna, that's it. This makes this process so much faster. I'm able to knock out an entire sheet tray in minutes. This whole process took four minutes. It is 11.05. Now with all the meatballs portioned, I have to cook all of them in a ton of chicken stock, but this chicken stock is going to be a very special chicken stock. To this massive amount of stock, I'm gonna throw in one whole onion for flavor. We're also gonna throw in another bunch of ginger for more flavor. Now this is where it gets a little bit fun and I'm gonna take some creative liberties here because I have leftover ramen broth from the Naruto diet that I did. There's no better way of reusing this ramen broth other than for ramen. Now I do have to bring this to a boil so I can cook those meatballs, so I'm gonna do it over there because there's a lot of it. Gandalf, don't you go up near those meatballs. Put that sniffer away, sir. Gandalf. There's, there's garlic and stuff in there. After getting Gandalf off the meatballs, it's time to prep some of the vegetables. And this is super simple. I'm using some baby bok choy that I have to wash and clean, followed by one massive carrot. I was gonna use two, but the one is plenty enough. Peel it, slice it into these nice thicker pieces. So this way, when I boil it later, it doesn't fall apart. Carrots though, they're done. We're gonna soak these in water so they stay nice and crisp. And then for the Napa cabbage, I'm just gonna peel back some of the leaves. And once the leaves are peeled back, I'm just cutting this in half. So this way I have nice chunky boys to put into my soup later tonight so they don't take too long to cook. Now we get cleaned up and we can actually make the meatballs. By now my poaching liquid is nice and hot and I'm gonna start dropping in all of my meatballs. Well, not all of them because there's so many. So I actually have to do this in two separate batches. Give this a little love nudge, you know? After a love nudge, I throw a lid on it and let them cook. My meatballs have been going for about seven or eight minutes now and these are looking really, really nice. Look at those guys right there. Look at them, nice and plump. As long as there's no raw looking chicken in there, you're good. No raw chicken. Cheers. Oh yeah. That's delicious. Now it's time to fish out every single meatball so they don't overcook. The unfortunate thing is that it's almost noon and I haven't gotten my first workout in. We have quite a bit to catch up on. That's why I'm going turbo speed to cook off the rest of these meatballs, making sure that these are fully cooked before I fish them back out. Now, all of my meatballs are ready to eat. Now that I have all of my meatballs ready to go, these have to cool down completely. But I also feel like since I'm running low on time today, I'm gonna have some of these for breakfast. Oh, and all of that liquid? Yeah. I have to cool this down so I can have this throughout the entire week. And now since I'm literally running out of time before I have to be to the gym, I'm doing a take on a traditional oyakudon or a chicken egg and rice bowl. I'm starting off with about a quarter of a sliced onion as well as some suyu, which is a soup style broth. I'm simmering this for just a minute or two. And then I'm gonna do four meatballs. This is pretty ideal because the meatballs are freshly cooked and they're still pretty hot. So after throwing those into my pan, I'm also adding in five egg whites to bump up the protein count. This is very not traditional, but I needed the extra protein. I'm turning off the heat and throwing a lid on it, then moving it to the other stove so this way I can finish working on some of the toppings. Namely, one egg that I'm gonna hard fry slightly and then flip it to make it nice and over easy. I'm only gonna cook this for maybe like 15, 30 seconds, not too long on this side. I like mine nice and easy. Now that that other egg is ready to go, I'm placing the rest of my egg and chicken and onion mixture onto 350 grams of rice, topping it with that egg and then some furikake. And there my friends is breakfast, finally. It looks kind of bland because it's very protein heavy and 
kind of want some like, we should put some green onion or something on it. Green onion definitely goes a long way. Now there is breakfast, not as sad looking. According to Macro Factor, this entire bowl of food comes out to 823 calories, 67 grams of protein, 12 grams of fat, and around 100 grams of carbohydrates. This is a pretty substantial amount of food, but I'm gonna need it for what's to come. I just like to make sure that I break the yolk because it's the only thing that I can kind of mix around into the rice. Get a bite with the rice and the egg and the green onion and the meatball. Cheers. That's a fantastic breakfast. I'm gonna take this down and I'll see you at the gym. My coach had sent me an entire Yuji style workout and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm starting off by just getting my body slightly warmed up because your boy is old. After a few mini lunges and whatever those things were, I'm starting off with a leg day. This means a ton of squats. And in this case, I'm actually going for higher reps and sets. This way I can build a bit more endurance without using too much weight on my body. After the squats, I really try to hit my hamstrings because that's one of the weakest parts of my body. And given that Yuji is very, very fast, it's super important that I really strengthen my legs. Not only that, but training legs for the entire week will be helpful for Taekwondo practice and for my sparring matches later, or so I like to tell myself. After more leg exercises, I was kind of hurting because of the previous day of Taekwondo. So after some stretching, I went and tried to do some of the homework that Master DJ had given me. This felt incredibly awkward because all of my old Kung Fu training kept trying to come back. So instead, I tried something completely new and did the groundwork exercises that we had practiced the day before, as well as the footwork before I ended up calling it a day because I have to go make lunch. Here is what's going on. It is 4 p.m. and I'm just now leaving the gym. I have to head home, make lunch, which probably won't be too heavy because we have to be back for training at 7 p.m., which is only three hours from now. And it, that's not actually a lot of time to like digest a big meal and then have a bunch of training. This is gonna be a very packed day because we did all of our meal prep ahead of time. So hopefully tomorrow is a little bit smoother because uh, today, Today's rough. <laughs> I'm hurting, man, what the hell? Now, welcome to the segment of today that's called Paul is not prepared. Like, I don't even actually need this yet. I have to make lunch. And lunch is gonna be super simple. I'm using around 10 ounces worth of chicken breast that I picked up because I wanted something a little lower in fat than the meatballs were. This is gonna be really easy to make. I'm taking my 10 ounces worth of chicken and dicing this up into one inch cubes. And this is ready to cook. I'm gonna do this in a very large saute pan. This way it'll actually have more surface area so it does cook a bit faster than a smaller saute pan. In the giant saute pan, I'm adding just a touch of oil to help cook off the chicken, dropping the chicken in as soon as that pan is nice and hot because I have to get going. I'm sauteing this just until I get a little color on the chicken, then throwing some water on top of it and kind of steaming the chicken a bit. We're gonna cook this for about five or six minutes until that chicken is done. And once the chicken is done, here's the next part. Add in just a touch more water to deglaze it. Then the secret ingredient to make some really good toppings for your rice is just to grab a really good jar of kimchi. Kimchi is an amazing hack when you add it to something like this. It essentially becomes a kimchi stir fry in a way, but the only thing you wanna make sure you do is to not fully cook the kimchi. It kind of defeats the purpose of the probiotics. I'm gonna be honest, this isn't the most exciting thing, but it is going to be delicious. A lot of the times for these diet videos, I lean towards utility versus flavor, and sometimes you have to make that sacrifice. So in this case, for this one bowl of food, this is 950 calories, 82 grams, with a protein, 11 grams of fat, and 120 grams of carbohydrates. To put it in perspective, 120 grams of carbohydrates, I think, is three cans of Coke. Or you could have all of this. Cheers. It's delicious. That's everything you would want. Hopefully, I don't get too tired. It is now 4.42. That means we spent, what, 15-ish minutes making this? That's not terrible. We have to eat this, shower, then head over to practice for tonight. I'll see you guys there. Well, this is day two and not gonna lie, I'm feeling extremely tired for this session. So I wore the Naruto pants to hopefully give me power. Let's get inside and get started. Walking into the dojo today, I felt incredibly excited, but a little anxious until I came across this poster that Master DJ had made. I sent him this picture as a joke and he absolutely blasted this all over the dojo and I'm super excited about it. I don't know why I feel like so intimidated today, even though we had a full day yesterday, like, I feel like now I know a little bit more, so I'm kind of worried. We'll see how today goes. I gotta stretch my, my groin, because that hurts from yesterday. Oh, that hurts. So we have four days to get ready for sparring and a belt ceremony. And I still have to eat a bunch of food when I get back for all the meal prep we did earlier today. 
This is a tough one. Maybe this is why people get like personal trainers and personal chefs. Uh, Michelle Carre, if you ever watch this, let me know and I will be your personal chef for one of your challenge accepted videos. Now, since I had a few minutes before my class started, I got a bit more stretching in and then we finally lined up for class. The way we line up is by belt ranking and since I don't have a belt, I line up at the back and at the end. We start by doing some high knees along with trying to touch your knees so this way it emulates trying to throw a block. This really felt like trying to rub your tummy and pat your head at the same oh, time. So we had to do it both ways and I still really couldn't figure it out that well, but then we moved straight into footwork and I forgot to take off my socks like an idiot. Why stay hands too? Remember front hand out in front of the body. Warmups actually are incredibly important as you can see by my lack of hip mobility. It felt like everything was super tight from the previous workout we did during the day, especially compared to someone like Cole and everyone else in the class. All right, partner up, get by the white wall then. Right, we're just gonna work on headshots, we're gonna work on the flexibility, making that a constant. I'm sorry, did Master DJ just say flexibility and headshots? Luckily, one of the black belts had demonstrated the headshots and it wasn't on me. I gotta keep my shoulder up as high as I can. I don't wanna get hit in the face, so I get the head back like this. Come here, boom. Just trust your partner not to hit you in the face. Now I trust my partner to not hit me in the face, but my legs are nowhere near as flexible as theirs are. So I warn my partner, please duck. I am not trying to hit you in the head here and everything hurts while I'm doing these. But during a tournament, headshots are worth five points. So we need to practice them. And this high swing is just getting used to getting that leg high, get it high. Big swing, big swing. And after all those warmups, I actually had to start putting all of this together by learning how to counter kick. I move, boom, and he goes right above the face for that roundhouse then, right? So it's an on motion, a look for motion. Counter kicking is incredibly important when you're talking about sparring and tournament practice. And of course, we wanna be ready for the tournament arc. I mean, look at Cole here. He basically is practicing black flash on me the entire time while I'm over here looking like tree beard trying to grow his branches. He might be my nemesis for the week, but he was kind enough to give me some pointers so this way I could get some of the kicks right. For the lead leg, we usually move inside like this. Okay, oh, okay, okay. But if you can't, go with some great advice from Cole, my kicks felt a bit better, but it didn't help the fact that everything still hurt. Did I mention we're only about 20 minutes into our practice? This is when we had to practice our defensive kicks. Now, Yuji and Toto like attacking, but I will say defense is incredibly important. And in this case, I get to hold a bag and charge Cole while he defends against me. This was a lot of fun because I kind of got to rush him down, but then we had to switch roles and I really couldn't figure this one out. This one was really tough for me to do because you had to lift your legs so quickly and then retreat. Halfway through, we swapped and then I lost all of my balance over again. This felt really hard. And just when I started figuring some things out, we had to now practice a jumping, retreating back kick. I have to learn how to jump, spin, and throw a kick all at one time today. Luckily, this one felt somewhat natural. <laughs> I ended up getting a little overconfident here and I'm pretty sure I smacked Cole in the elbow. <laughs> oh, 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 almost got the elbow, sorry. <laughs> but Yuji and Toto don't stand still when they throw any of their attacks. So we had to practice this kick while being charged by one of the bags. Cole went up first and demonstrated this for me and as confident as I was previously, moving and backtracking while trying to throw these spinning, jumping back kicks was incredibly difficult. It's so much different when you're moving towards me. Shot. This is all happening so fast that I can't take it all in. And now we have to practice two different kicks while being chased at the same time. And he hits the cut, right? So it's just, it's just quick. Back it out, boom, and then and then stop him again. This even seemed difficult for a gold medalist like Cole. How on earth am I going to do this? After Cole demonstrated the first time, it was my turn to go. That's rough. My brain could not put all three things together. Being chased, throwing a back kick, then backpedaling, then throwing a cut kick. It really felt like I was a newborn trying to crawl. But when I think about Yuji and how he was able to do consecutive black flash attacks at the same time, this is what it really felt like, but only when Cole was doing it, not when I was doing it. When Treebeard was up, it was more of just trying to survive. <sighs> I. You know, feel the, the rice and the meatballs yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of was a yeah, poor yeah. choice. After all that training and even feeling my food now, we still had to get stretching practice in. And yes, it is stretching practice. Being hyper flexible for something like Taekwondo gives you more power and a lot more reach. Someone like Cole is incredibly flexible. And then we have me over here who can barely get his knee straight. This is not good. Again, communicate with your partner. Let him know how you're feeling. Okay, that's, that's it. <laughs> oh God, it hurts so much. 
If you want to have a heart to heart, now's the time. Yeah. So let me know about your day. Uh, I'm gonna, can I write my will? <laughs> yeah, right. Kill you. <laughs> and after a bit of torture, we finally ended day two. I cannot explain to you how sore everything is. You guys are dismissed. Thank you guys. Good work today, everybody. <laughs> Dude, how you like smell, man? <laughs> I, and today was leg day. At was it really? Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was a little rough. Not gonna lie, but it was. It was. It's so good because usually, like, I get home from the gym and have a big meal. Yeah, and then yeah, I'm yeah. just like, oh my God, I can't do anything else. I'm like, okay, let's get there. Let's get the old man going, you know? And like, as soon as I get here, I'm like, all right, we're good. Yeah, yeah, like, I, feel, I feel better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's it's awesome. So next session is Thursday. So I get a day off tomorrow, yeah. technically, but I'm going to do the homework. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, yeah, no, I'll have more homework then. More you. homework? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we're always like progressing, you know what I mean? Okay, it's that's like, fair. But yeah, that, that was like basically day one and then we'll... Okay. Yeah, the one will be like some more I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, good. Thank you, sir. Yes. Appreciate it. Go. Day two's done. Let's Day go get two, some. Baby. Uh, let's go get some chicken meatballs. Oh, <laughs> go man. make. I gotta go make dinner. <laughs> Those are good. Those sound great. So we just got back from training, and it is 10 p.m. And uh, Master DJ gave me more homework to do tomorrow, since tomorrow I don't have to come into the dojo. So we're gonna take advantage of this, but we we gotta make our ginger chicken meatballs. At t I never eat this late. This is so late. I I just want to go to bed, but I also need a shower. But before the shower, I wanna make these ginger chicken meatballs. To start, I'm taking some of that stock that I had cooked and heated up earlier and I'm reheating it in a small pan. Normally with something like this, you would use a Japanese clay pot, but instead I'm just using a small steel pot to make a small batch. Now I'm gonna kick this on and bring this to a nice rolling boil because we don't really have to cook anything. And to help this go along a bit faster because it's so late, I threw a lid on it just to get it hot. That's good enough. I'm gonna take two green onions, pop that right in there flavor, baby. Then I'm gonna take quite a bit of my Napa cabbage that I have, and this is gonna go in directly. Along with the Napa cabbage, I'm throwing in some of the fresh carrots we sliced, along with some really nice mushrooms, and a bit of that fresh bok choy that we cleaned up as well. And actually, because I'm being pretty lazy today, because it's still 10 p.m. and I have not had dinner yet, I'm gonna take my eight chicken ginger meatballs, and we're just gonna put this straight in before it's come up to that rolling simmer. This way, everything is just hot at the same time. And last but not least, I'm gonna flavor it with just a bit of suyu. And once this thing has come up to a boil again, this is when I'm actually gonna crack in two whole eggs directly into the broth to up the amounts of fat that I'm having throughout the day. Cover this again for about 60 seconds, maybe a minute. Wait, that's the same time. My brain is off <laughs> right now. It's been a long, it's been a long day. So after 60 seconds or a minute, I'm removing some of the vegetables so they don't overcook completely and making a giant bowl of food for Rachel. It's not gonna look as pretty as making everything in a traditional clay pot, but you know what? It's late, we're hungry. I don't know why I'm using a measuring cup to scoop out some of the broth, but it was the closest thing next to me and I couldn't be bothered to find another one, but here are two beautiful bowls of food. Now with this dinner, I also get another portion of rice just because why not keep it going? So this entire bowl of food here with the meatballs and the rice comes out to around 730 calories, 65 grams of protein, 21 grams of fat, and 71 carbohydrates. This is a pretty good amount of food, especially to have this late in the evening just because I'll probably be in bed in the next hour. Cheers. I'm so tired. Mm. Those meatballs are delicious. Take the egg, put it on top of the rice. Oh yeah. Honestly, this isn't a bad way to end the night, but we're only on day two. We still have five more days to go and, and a lot ahead of us. So I'm gonna take this down and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? I feel like my body is wrecked. I grabbed myself a coffee and I feel like the dinner we had last night is still sitting in my stomach because we ate it so late. I know, Lucian, I know. For breakfast, for the rice bowl I'm making today, I actually had a little bit of help from my friend, Josh Strife Hayes. And I reached out to him and I asked him, what is your favorite thing to have on rice? And him being the fancy man that he is, had sent me a message saying, sweet chili chicken. So we're gonna make some sweet chili chicken. I'm combining around one cup worth of water, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a splash of mirin, around a half a cup of rice wine vinegar, and then a splash of soy sauce. What's up, dude? You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Why are you going crazy? Lucian just wanted a few kisses. Now that he's happy, I'm taking two whole Thai chilies and slicing them nice and thin. I actually keep these in the freezer, so anytime that I want them, I have them available. These Thai chilies are getting directly added to our liquid for the sauce, along with some fresh chopped garlic. Once those two are added, I'm placing this onto the stove to reduce by half. But I made a mistake. I did not wear gloves to cut up the Thai chilies, so I have to be cognizant of that for when I go to the bathroom. Now that I know where my hands have been, I'm gonna start prepping a bit of hash brown to go on top of this 
this rice bowl. Yes, these are pre-dried hash browns that I picked up from Costco that I'm just rehydrating with some hot water. Once they're rehydrated, these hash browns are ready to cook. So in a small pan, I'm drizzling just a bit of oil into there, then seasoning the hash browns and getting these nice and crispy. Now this does have to cook for about three to four minutes on each side. So I'm gonna let this cook while we finish cooking the chicken here. I'm making myself around six and a half to seven ounces of chicken breast and I'm just seasoning this with salt. And that's because I'm gonna be brushing on some of this wonderful sauce directly onto the chicken breast. I'm only adding a small amount of the sauce because I'm gonna be drizzling a lot of this on later. After I flip the chicken, I'm gonna cook it on the other stove and now we have to deal with the hash brown. This could be a dangerous one. Hoots. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. That's a nice one. That's a, ni that's a nice hash brown. It's gonna sit over there for another minute or two and it's done and then we can have breakfast. I need about 150 to let's say 200 grams of rice. What does this come out to? This comes out to 190, so we'll just go with that. This is gonna go in the microwave for just about 30 to 40 seconds just until it's warm. Rice, fresh out of a microwave. That's a sentence. Hash brown, crispy, textures. Yep, yeah, come on hash brown. Don't you do this to me hash brown. One piece please. Look at, look at that. If that doesn't make you excited, I don't know what does. Oh, I forgot my eggs. No, that's okay. I can make an egg very quickly. After starting the egg on the stove, I started slicing my chicken because this thing is juicy and ready to go. Finish it up with quite a bit of that sauce and then some green onions, but now we have to top it with that beautiful egg. Yes. And since I had extra sauce, the extra sauce is absolutely going on the egg. Admittedly, this took about 20 minutes to put together, so which is not a very quick breakfast, but it is a delicious one. I have to send a picture of this to Josh. Let's see if we, we get a response from him. Spoilers, we did get a response from him. This entire meal comes out to 845 calories, 65 grams of protein, 21 grams of fat, and 94 grams of carbohydrates. This is what we all wanna see. Oh, yes. My mouth just immediately started watering. Cheers. Mm. You get this wonderful texture from the hash browns where eating it with rice almost tastes like you have the crispy rice at the bottom of a pan, which I forget the name of, but it almost has that same contrast to it, which is beautiful. The Thai chili is not overly sweet and surprisingly not overly spicy. This is a good one. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you. Now to take this down and I'll see you guys at the gym. And I'm gonna need all of those calories for the gym because this is the entire workout that my trainer has me set up for today. And at least today is an upper body day, but what that means is tomorrow when I actually have Taekwondo training, it's gonna be a leg day again. So for today, I'm starting off with my warm up, which is just rowing to get the body a little warm and then bent over rows for quite a few reps. After that, we get some fun angles using the dumbbells by doing chest presses as well as chest supported bent over rows. These are one of my favorites and I apologize for having a little bit of fun with the camera. Next up, to get my dips in while Master Roshi walks around in the background. This guy is an absolute chad. He is always at the gym and keep killing it, man. Now we also have to hit our core once again and we're hitting core every single time this week. You need a very, very strong core for martial arts because of all the twisting, pulling, and dynamic movements. I'm gassing myself out with a few snatches and then going right into sets of half burpees. And we are not done here. I'm gonna be eating some pineapple gummy bears while studying Master DJ's homework. And that homework is a tremendous amount of footwork. After the first two days of training, I really felt like my footwork was completely off. I wanted to practice a bit of speed, a bit of technique, and a few jukes to hopefully put myself in a better position during sparring and the tournament arc. Yes, I am absolutely that guy at the gym who's in the back throwing kicks and punches, but I have a very good reason for this. I'm fighting three Taekwondo black belts in a row. I always end these sessions with a bit of stretching and just a few minutes of cardio, which is obviously a mistake considering how much cardio I'm doing this week. Not gonna lie, I think I I may have pushed it a little bit too much. We're gonna head home and maybe make something a little more special just to get me excited because I'm exhausted. <laughs> Truly. Now I'm back from the gym with a baguette. And before I get my second training of the day in, I'm gonna be making a very special lunch. Now I'm still gonna be using a lot of the ingredients I've prepped beforehand. I'm throwing in some of that stock we had made into my tiny pot, along with some chopped Japanese style curry. This is similar to the curry I'd used for the Rock Lee diet. So if you wanna see that from scratch, you can watch it over there. All I need to do is boil this together. Now once it's thickened up, I'm just gonna set this over to the stove because I'm gonna cook off some meatballs. Now I'm gonna be using 10 of my ginger chicken meatballs, cutting them in half and searing them 
them in a pan. Once you get all the meatballs in there, to reheat these really nicely, we're just gonna introduce just a touch of water. This way they'll be able to steam just a bit, we'll throw a lid on this, and let this cook for just about two minutes. And after those two minutes, I'm removing the lid just to let the water evaporate. This way I'm treating them almost like making dumplings in a pan. And once that water's evaporated, I'm adding in just a touch of curry on top of the meatballs. This way we can coat them slightly before we finish the sandwich. That should be good. You can see I didn't really put in too much of the sauce onto my meatballs. And once the meatballs are hot, this is when I'm throwing everything onto my baguette. Yes, all 10 of those meatballs. Also adding a touch of green onions and then some cilantro, but feel free to use parsley if you don't like the flavor of soap. And the remaining curry goes in a small side bowl. And look at that. I really only introduced two or three new things. We introduced the bread and the cilantro and the curry, and we have an entirely new meal. This entire plate of food comes out to around 780 calories, 68 grams of protein, 28 grams of fat, and around 61 grams of carbohydrates. We gotta give it the dip. Got, oh, I lost a meatball. Cheers. This is my new favorite way to have these meatballs. You still get the ginger and the garlic from the meatballs. The chicken is still really nicely cooked. And then you just have the curry, which has an insane amount of flavor behind it. And then some of the freshness from the cilantro and the green onions. This is a winner. I'm gonna take this down and get ready for the second training of the day. What, you thought I wasn't gonna be training twice today? I have to harness as much energy as possible into this bear, otherwise it's going to wake up and smack me in the face. So I sat down and turned on some peak anime and then tried to hold Gandalf steady as long as possible, which wasn't very long, so I guess I can start making dinner. And dinner is actually gonna be a really quick and easy weeknight kanji. I learned this method from my friends over at Made With Lao, where they use leftover rice as well as water to make a quick and easy weeknight kanji. But instead of water, I'm using around 32 ounces of that broth that we had prepped out along with around one cup worth of rice. This way we have a really nice and luscious kanji. You want to constantly be stirring it, not only to make sure the rice doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot, but to also make sure that you're breaking down the rice. The starch is what thickens kanji. Stirring it like this helps break everything down, but what it also means is you have to do this for quite a while. I ended up stirring this for about 20 minutes on that medium high heat before adding in around 11 of my ginger chicken meatballs, around a quarter head of cabbage, some of that bok choy that we had prepped out as well, and then gave this a stir. Admittedly, my kanji was a little loose after adding some of the vegetables because of the water that they had, but it still came out okay. This could have been thickened up quite a bit more, but I decided to go with it because it was getting late. I topped it off with some green onions, a bit more of the bok choy, soy sauce, and chili paste. So according to Macro Factor, this entire bowl of food comes out to 650 calories, 63 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat, and 65 grams of carbohydrates. This is a tremendous amount of food for that amount of calories. <sighs> Cheers. It's subtle in its flavors. The rice is nice and broken down. A bit of the flavor from the soy sauce gives it that saltiness. Chili paste <clears throat> is spicy, but it's really good. And then one of the meatballs, which I'm probably gonna have to bite into because it's so hot. It just goes perfectly. I'm gonna take this thing down and I'm just gonna go to bed because I'm exhausted. I only have one more day of training before sparring on Friday. I'm gonna try to rest up. I'll see you guys in the morning. Admittedly, I didn't really want anything this morning. It's really hard for me to break certain habits, especially when it comes to my morning routines. And so I'm just gonna be making a simple egg sandwich. I was really just craving this today for some reason. It's a very simple thing that I make almost every single morning. It's just a few egg whites, a couple of eggs, salt and pepper, and I throw this in the microwave for a few minutes to cook. Yes, I use a microwave every morning to make my breakfast because it's just easier. A little bit of cheese onto my bread to give it some creaminess and some flavor. And this thing is pretty much what I want Wanted. I didn't really want anything else. I have all of this other food meal prepped out, but this was the only thing that sounded good. Halfway through the week, I really started to struggle, and so I just wanted to give myself what I wanted. And you know what? That is totally okay. This is all I really wanted for breakfast. My microwaved eggs with a bit of toast and some cheese and some ketchup. I also have some watermelon on the side just to have a little bit of fruit. And this took all of like six minutes to put together, really no time at all. And this breakfast comes out to 650 calories, 54 grams of protein, 22 grams of fat, and 60 grams of carbohydrates. This is what I wanted. Big old egg sandwich. That gave me all of the power that I need to get to the gym today.
Along with that power, I absolutely had a second cup of coffee. This is just a simple Starbucks cold brew with a splash of cream because that's just how I like to drink it. I started off leg day, yes, leg day again, with a little bit of bicycle work and then what are called Cossack squats. These help loosen up my legs because this is a primarily deadlifting day. I'm doing a ton of deadlifts again for volume and reps to make sure that I can have a bit of endurance for when we get into training later. After the deadlifts, it's another leg exercise and one of my most hated favorites, the front squat. After that, I did a bit of hamstring work doing single leg deadlifts, followed by some single leg box squats, and then of course you have to work the calf muscles. I also did a bit of oblique work, which looks really awkward with this camera setup, got some stretching in, tried to touch my toes and failed, stretched my butt and hip a bit, and that was all I could manage. We only have actually one more day of training and then sparring tomorrow, so there's it's coming up quick, and I don't, I am so, I am so nervous. I am so nervous. To help with the nerves, I'm gonna make myself a really fun lunch. Now since nothing sounded good, yes, I did stop by the store again, which kind of goes against the meal prep vibe, but this is the only thing that sounded really, really good to me right now. And that is going to be an adult peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now you may be wondering, how do you make an adult peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Well, you actually have to combine two types of peanut butter together. Peanut butter powder, along with a bit of milk, and regular peanut butter to get a nice thick paste. See that, it's almost like a paste. Guys, you're not ready for this. This is when I add the second peanut butter. This is a half serving of peanut butter. How many of us put more than that on one celery stick? I eat peanut butter by the spoonful. This is why I like to split my peanut butter in two different varieties. Then I have two pieces of toast. This is the same bread I use for breakfast. Now here's a trick I like to do. I like to make sure I spread even amounts of peanut butter on both pieces of toast. This way it acts as a barrier for the jelly when we add that to it. If you don't, you have the risk of having the jelly bleed straight through the toast. Now we spread it and top it and it admire it just for a second. That is a thick, thick boy. Set this to the side while we finish the rest. And the rest is actually somewhat of a milkshake. I'm using equal parts non-fat milk and kefir and then one scoop of whey protein. Yes, this is cheating a little bit, but I wanted to amp up the protein in this and make it really thick. Oh, the kefir and the milk with the whey make it so rich, almost like a milkshake. Cut it in half because we are adults here. It's not the prettiest because that piece of bread is so thick, but I'm excited. So this meal, for how small it is, this is 835 calories, 73 grams of protein, 18 grams of fat and 100 carbohydrates. And this actually makes me excited to eat. Like I said before, nothing else got me excited. So I'm really happy with this. Cheers. You have to try this. I'm gonna take this down, relax for just a little bit. What I'm thinking since it's only 2 p.m. is I may have dinner before I go train. That way I don't have to eat so late in the evening. So we'll see how we feel. And I'll either see you at the dojo or back here in a few hours. I gotta admit, after that peanut butter jelly and that protein shake, I feel pretty freaking good. So we're gonna be making dinner and then head over to class. Dinner, my friends, is something that you're probably familiar with. This is a rendition of the Goku black noodles that are in my book, Any Bites. I made this when I did the Goku diet quite a while ago and it's quickly become one of my favorite recipes. You can pick that up in my brand new cookbook, Any Bites Master Edition at the link down below. That's over at chefpk.com. Pre-orders are still available. The books are arriving soon from overseas and then we can finally ship them out. Now I could totally use the ginger chicken meatballs for this recipe, but I do have leftover chicken from when I made that dish for Josh Strife Hayes. So to make sure I keep using all of my leftovers, I diced up that chicken and threw it into my large saute pan with just a touch of oil. After sauteing the chicken for about a minute or two, I'm just throwing in a bit of water onto here and covering it with a lid to help the chicken steam and finish cooking because this should cook very quickly. Once that chicken is nice and steamed, this is when I'm using leftover vegetables to finish up this dish. Starting with a bit of sliced onion, some of the sliced carrot, a bit of the sliced cabbage, and leaving the green onion for later. Saute this up and then add in two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, two tablespoons of mirin, two tablespoons of black vinegar, which is what the dish is kind of named after, and then around two and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, and you can kind of adjust this for salt if you really want to. Saute this for another minute or two just until the sauce gets nice and glazed, and then add in all of the green onion to finish it off. I ended up microwaving 200 grams of rice that we had left over from the day before as well, and then I'm just throwing everything on top of this. This entire dish takes about six minutes to make. It's the perfect quick dish. This is the most food on top of rice I have made, I think, in this entire series. This entire bowl of food comes out to 600 calories, 46 grams of protein, 18 grams of fat, and 65 grams of carbohydrates. And this is gonna be perfect because training is in about two hours. Oh, the sauce kind of hit the bottom of the rice, so the rice is starting to soak it all up. Cheers. Really hot.
I'm gonna finish this off and get ready for training. I'll see you guys there. So it's day four, it's Thursday, and you guys remember how right before I ate the last meal, I said I felt great, had a bunch of energy, and as soon as I finished eating it and I sat down, uh, I got super tired, so we'll see how today goes. Ugh, everything hurts. I feel like an old man. I turned 40 in three years. Hey, how's it going, Rick? Thank you. How's it going? I'm sore. Yes. Yeah. I'm sore, but each night that I've come back, it's felt pretty good to like get started, you know, instead of just sitting at home. So that's been nice. You're going to be light stuff though. Is today sparring or no, tomorrow? No, no. Well, I always mix. Like a lot of times, we mix stuff in though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like we'll do. It's not like full, full gear, full contact. Okay. So it's gonna be lighter stuff. You know, it's like just shin guards, arm guards, and like lead leg versus lead leg. You yeah. know what I mean? Like covering, blocking. Okay. And just like finding like just strategic points to hit. Okay. Get your timing down and stuff like that. We'll probably okay. go through some rules too that we like. When I go in tomorrow, we can just get you sparring and just. Got it. Keep with so it, I'm yeah. not just like rushing in there. We'll cover that. <laughs> Don't break anybody's knees. That's yeah. not good. <laughs> so now it's time to get started, and I'm starting with a few stretches. I'm selling Everybody feet picks stretch. on OnlyFans. Five dollars. You can have this skull. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not buy my feet picks. As we get class started, Master DJ really wanted to show us some of the ropes for when it came down to tournament sparring. Taekwondo tournament sparring is very similar to Olympic boxing, except in this case, you are using your legs instead of your arms. I tried to make sure I was immersed and paid attention to everything because I know this is going to come in handy when we start sparring the next day. The footwork is what makes everything count. Being able to quickly switch back and forth and move around freely is going to prevent you from getting hit in the head and maybe get a couple of points on your opponent. So grab a partner, grab a clappy hand, target, or you're by the way wall. And after a quick warm up, it's finally time to get some kicks in. Now today we are practicing all of the kicks, literally all of the kicks before we start light sparring. Now I'm gonna put a bag out and she's gonna hit it. Just lead leg, single aggressive kick. Wow. I'm sorry, did you see how fast that was? I'm over here with my old man hips, not knowing if I can even throw my leg out. The goal of this exercise was to hit the target wherever your partner places it. This allows you to really think on your feet and try to get in some fast attacks. One of the key components of this exercise was practicing those jukes. This way you might throw off your opponent during sparring. This started to get incredibly difficult because you had to think about everything at once. Look at the difference between what I was doing and what Cole was doing. Sure, he's the gold medalist I'm going up against, but every time I see his kicks, I get more and more impressed by how fast and how wide he can kick. And that was just the easy stuff. Now we had to go into triple kicks. Yes, triple. If I do a roundhouse, he does three in a row. One, two, three. Okay, go cut. One, two, three. Get comfortable with this footwork here. Bow, bow, bow. Okay, so three in a row, three in a row. Okay. I think most of us have a hard enough time throwing three regular jabs with our arm in a row. Trying to throw three cut kicks in a row is incredibly difficult. The speed and technique you need here is incredibly different than throwing those single leg kicks. Wow, look at that. Hey, flexibility is not that bad though. Ugh, it's not it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're kicking with him though. <laughs> yeah. Now I get to hold the targets for Cole and I'm gonna try to push him to his limit just a little bit. He's been doing this for a very long time so watching him really push here was awesome to see. Okay, let's put those bags away then and then we're gonna get uh, just shin guards and arm guards on. Now it's actually time for light sparring. This just requires a few shin guards and arm guards to make sure we don't hurt ourselves. Oh God, I can't bend over. I'm so, I'm so sore. The shin guards and arm guards are incredibly important for sparring, especially in Taekwondo. You don't want your bones hitting each other, otherwise you may end up hurting yourselves. But at this point, I'm so tired, I may end up hurting myself just from walking around. This is getting real. This is getting real. Sorry, don't you? Yeah, 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 bring the mouth guard tomorrow. Okay. Because you'll get kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah, you'll get kicked a lot. I only laugh because otherwise I would probably be crying at the potential thought of being kicked in the head multiple times from multiple opponents. But now it's time to get started. Cancel most. I just want to make sure we know what a cancel is, how to cancel. A cancel is when someone throws a kick towards you and you raise your knee to intercept that kick, effectively canceling it out. That's all it is right now. We're just lifting under, right? So Dell's kicks, pull this under. He's trying to displace the kick, make sure it's not effective. 
We practiced this a few times, trying to get that rhythm and that motion down, but it felt a little off still. It feels, it feels very much like a, like a yeah. block with the arm. Wow. Yeah, okay, that, nice. that makes so, so much more sense for, okay. Going from Kung Fu to Taekwondo was a much harder switch than it was for me to just pick up Kendo after not knowing anything about sword fighting in my previous Ichigo video. But Master DJ explained it in a very easy way. Sparring is kind of like rock, paper, scissors. So cancels only work in certain scenarios. They don't work against everything. If Dallas does a back leg kick, like a back leg roundhouse, Cole would not want to cancel. It doesn't really work that well. Why? Because the leg's not in front of his body until it make co makes contact with him. For this one then, what's gonna happen is you're gonna flick it. Just as I was learning the regular cancel motion, now I'm trying to learn a cancel motion by flicking away someone's roundhouse. I'm trying to really absorb as much information as possible because this is a crash course for me and I only have two days to get ready for sparring. Luckily, I was paired up with another instructor who kind of showed me the ropes for some of the cancels. Oh, and this instructor is also a black belt and I'll be fighting him on Sunday too. All right, next we're gonna work on then, uh, we're gonna actually do some light sparring. So this is it. This is when I get to start my light sparring and luckily my instructor friend Connor gave me some tips. It didn't stop me from wanting to really listen in and try to get as much advice as possible. But when it comes down to sparring, sometimes I lock up really easily because I think way too much. I was very fortunate that he went pretty easy on me and tried to show me a few different moves that I could apply, but I kept just trying to dodge out of the way and kind of throw a kick here and there. My mind was just racing with too many possibilities. We ended up switching partners quite a few times and every time I swapped, I tried to learn something new, but it really felt like I couldn't apply it as well as I really wanted to. I was mostly just dodging attacks left and right, trying to not get hit. But going up against people who have been doing this for years is very eye-opening. I almost got smacked in the head quite a few times during light sparring. And as we rotated partners, I went up against more and more powerful opponents. And yes, these guys are fast. I even cheated a little bit. Oh, that's a penalty, right? L just lifting the knee. In sparring Taekwondo, you cannot lift your leg without throwing a kick. So anytime I lifted my leg to block, if it wasn't for a cancel, would actually be a penalty point. And come on, back in the middle. Ooh. All right, same thing. What's in there? Faster. Rotate left. <laughs> These are all things that I had to try to keep in mind while learning all this. And then I was finally paired up with Cole, who hopefully would go a little easy on me, but I have a feeling that's not going to be happening on Sunday. Usually when you're up against an opponent multiple times, you start to learn a bit of their nuances, but I just couldn't really figure out Cole's. Okay, let's stay. We'll stay at the gasping. same person right now. <laughs> but now we're going to do, you can, you can just kind of kick however. Ready? Go! Even with that freedom, it didn't seem to help me at all. And I was gonna say, yeah, keep, yeah, keep moving, stay reactionary. Don't get stuck like this and go like, ta ta ta. <laughs> Just stay through to the head. <laughs> yeah, okay. stay through the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once you space a lot of times, yeah, good. I got cheeky and tried to throw a couple of back kicks that were too low. And then finally, as we ended, Cole decided to kick me in the head a little bit. Three, two, one, come on, good. <sighs> that little dude can move. <sighs> Being absolutely gassed, tired, and sore, it was nice to finish out the day, or so I thought. So we're not done yet though, we're gonna finish with a little bit of workout, burpees. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've done burpees. All right. I like to laugh through my pain. Your goal is to not stop. Minute and a half, that's our goal. 90 One seconds. minute, 30 seconds. Let's go, ready, and begin. My goal for these 90 seconds were to just continue doing burpees. Not fast, not slow, just to keep doing them. My legs were absolutely on fire and I realized I was cheating. Good work, everybody. Oh, we're doing full burpees, oh God. I was doing half burpees, but nobody has to know. No one has to know. Good job, keep it up. It's easy work. <laughs> Laugh through the pain. If you stop, you're gonna be on the camcorder too. So I can go back and watch you stopping and then yell at you, yell at you for it. <laughs> so we have proof now. We'll delete it. You keep, no, don't delete it. Don't delete we'll delete it. it. <laughs> Three, two, one, and uh, nice job. Yep, absolutely feel like I'm gonna throw up and fall over and pass out. Ty, go on, you guys are dismissed. Thanks everybody. Good work, you guys. Thank you for the help. We didn't today. make it happen. Connor, thank you for the help today. Wow. <laughs> Dude, summer camp's almost done, man. Thank you for your help. Yeah. Day four. Ah! Day four. Day four, man. Day Thank four. Thank you. Two days left. Well, really, one day left. One day left. <laughs> one day left in the belt promotion. Uh, which yeah. comes with more sparring. Yes. <laughs> so I need to come with all my gear tomorrow, right? Yes. Let's all right, do man. This. Thank you. 
See you tomorrow. Being closed, dude. Let's go. We did it. I'm gonna go pass out. I'll see you in the morning. Wait. Hey, good we work. still have to You're go have doing dinner. Good stuff. I technically had a really big dinner before practice, so as I waddled my way back to the car, I thought about having a snack. And dinner is gonna be a cliff bar because I'm done. I'll see you in the morning. My friends, it is day five. That means we are sparring tonight, but today we're gonna go all in on rice with food on top. And the first dish that's rice with food on top is going to be some of the ginger chicken meatballs that I'm throwing into the microwave to keep breakfast super simple. I'm heating up around five ounces of that soup stock I made along with a splash of suyu. Gonna bring this to a simmer and then I'm gonna thicken this with some now not stirred up cornstarch slurry. I don't need too much slurry because I want this to be thick enough to coat the meatballs but not so thick that it becomes too thick to pour over the rice. Then we're gonna take our now heated meatballs and place it into the sauce. Give us a quick toss, make sure that the meatballs are coated in our now thickened sauce, which is really, really nice. Then I measured out 300 grams worth of white rice. This is about 85 grams of carbohydrate. Then we're gonna take our meatballs out, place them right into the center, take our sauce and just drizzle it all over the rice. This is gonna coat the rice really nicely. Some sesame seed, which I pulled out way too much. And then of course, some furikake. And lastly, green onion, right on top. And there's another way of having chicken and rice meatballs. But to amp up the protein of this entire dish, I'm also gonna have 16 ounces of fat-free milk. Remember, the theme for breakfast, especially if you're gonna be training later on, right after breakfast, is to keep your fats pretty low. So this entire meal, with everything here, with the two glasses of milk, along with the rice and the meatballs, comes out to about 700 calories, 58 grams of protein, seven grams of fat, and around 100 grams of carbohydrates. This will process very quickly in your system, especially now that I really have to work out in the next like 45 minutes. Cheers. I think this can be a great breakfast, lunch, or dinner. How does the milk go with this? This is gonna be weird. Yeah, the milk doesn't go with it, so we're gonna eat this first and then have milk for the dessert, and I'll see you guys at the gym. Let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. It is an upper body day, which means my legs should be somewhat fresh for Taekwondo later tonight. As always, starting it off with a little bit of a warm up. In this case, we're doing some rows and then some stretching of the lats. Next is to hit some push ups just to make sure that we get some blood flowing to that upper body along with some extra exercises to get the back going as well because this is a chest and back day. I start things off with some shoulder presses, making sure I hit a few different variations of them and making sure that I up the weight just a little bit each and every time. These are a little difficult for me because I do have some collarbone issues, but they weren't acting up too much. Next is some simple lat pull downs, making sure I hit the back quite a few times, getting as many reps in as possible. Then my least favorite exercise, pike push-ups. These rely a lot on technique, so I just do them with body weight. After the pike push-ups, I go immediately into seated rows. This helps out your back tremendously, and it's one of my favorite exercises because it allows you to really feel that squeeze into your back. Then of course, we have to get some auxiliary exercises, which are just going to be some bicep curls along with some tricep push-downs with the rope. And as always, we have to get some core work in to help strengthen our core for all the twisting, pushing, pulling, everything that the core will be doing during Taekwondo. Having a strong core for martial arts is very, very important. I finish it off with a few stretches before I make a very One Punch Man inspired lunch. If you have your book There's a big reason why I'm going with the banana, and it's not just because One Punch Man Saitama loves them. They have a considerable amount of potassium which helps with muscle recovery, which I really feel like I need. Not only that, but there's a good amount of carbohydrates, and along with the massive amount of protein in this shake, is a perfect pre-workout meal before we get started with sparring training tonight. I reached into the One Punch Man diet for this inspiration. No, it's not just a banana, there's other things with it, but I have an hour to get to training, which means I need to consume something right now that's more than likely gonna be liquid, which is this, so we can get ready for training. This entire 32 ounces of liquid is 730 calories, 90 grams worth of protein, five grams of fat, and about 90 grams worth of carbs. I have to go get all my sparring gear. I'll see you guys there. It's day five. It's uh, sparring training day to get ready for Sunday, which is actually my testing day. I have to test for my belt, and that means fighting a bunch of people. I, this is gonna be rough. I am so tired. I'm just gonna stand there and get smacked. Master DJ, how's it going? Hey, good man. How are you? Good. I'm gonna get some stretching in before I get oh, started. Oh, do it, yes. yes. <laughs> do it, make it happen, man, make it happen. All right, stretching time? Stretch it out, baby, yeah. I got all this room I'm here. gonna go steal that corner. I'm gonna be over there. 
today's gonna be rough. Today's gonna be really rough, not gonna lie. I think that everything has tightened up over the past four or five days. So I'm trying to loosen up before we get started so I don't feel like a tight rubber band before everything happens. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. I don't know how I feel about this. To release some nerves, I decided to get a little creative with how I wanted to warm up and it led to this. See, that was pretty good. My wife really didn't think that was pretty good. I think I pulled something though. When you're this sore, maybe don't start with cartwheels. <laughs> Even Master DJ was a little surprised by the cartwheels. Getting the cartwheels out, man. Get them out, you know, pull the hammies now so I don't have to worry about it later. <laughs> That's right, yeah, do it now so you don't have to worry about it later, I like that. After a few initial warm-ups, it's finally time to start today's light sparring practice. Are you excited right now? I'm like excited, nervous, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had good reason to be excited, nervous because Master DJ then said this. Little guys, if you go against the big guys, how do you fight? You hard, yeah, go hard. Yeah, beat him up, they're, they're tough. That's what I'm saying, if you fight him, you beat him up. I feel like I'm being called out on this one to just be the punching bag, but that's okay. I'm built for that. We did a few more light warm-ups, which may have been to my detriment. So much banana milkshake. <laughs> Remember, we ate that banana milkshake just about an hour ago, and then we had to do ladder sprints, we had to do regular sprints, we had to get all of that footwork in, and after being warmed up, it was finally time to put on all of my gear. I'm ready, I'm done. I want ice cream. I don't think I need these. These are the big boys. I think I'm missing arm guards, but I got a cup. I have a feeling I'm gonna get my butt kicked. They're all like little firecrackers. Woo, I am sweating. I have to admit, doing two day workouts has led me to realize that I am not in the shape that I really want to be in, but that's why we use anime to get us excited. I'm ready. I actually wasn't that ready. I had to get help from Coach Dad to help me put everything on because it was really difficult to tie this thing down by yourself. Normally, you're gonna have someone help you put on all of your body armor. And in this case, I was very thankful to have Coach Dad help me out here. After we got everything on, Master DJ walked us through a few more steps to get ready for light sparring practice. Now, the reason why we call it light sparring is because we're not going full contact initially. This is a way to practice our technique on an actual target. And I'm lucky enough to go up against Cole, who I'm going to be fighting on Sunday. I feel like a I feel like a Ninja Turtle right now. Bryce, it should be. All right, ready, go. And Cole came out swinging. Cole was on offense while I had to practice all of my defense, which was really difficult when you're going up against someone who's been doing this for years. Every single time he connects, it's an additional point. So I'm just thinking, I have zero points to Cole's probably 20 at this point. Okay, switch it. Now it's time for me to go on offense while Cole was on defense. It was incredibly hard to just try to connect even one hit on him. Quick explanation, this is a clinch. Yeah. You get here and we don't, nobody kicks, we just kind of tap and reset. Oh, okay, okay. Clinching in Taekwondo is very similar to clinching in boxing where you kind of just reset. Three, two, one, and switch. Now it's back to Cole on offense and he was coming out swinging again. I basically backpedaled the whole time and just stood there like tree beard taking all of the shots. Granted, I do have a lot of weight on him, so that kind of helped. But that was just round one. one come on, good. Oh my yeah. God. Right, I guess you, I guess you gassed. Oh yeah. <gasps> oh my God. I'm so gassed. Being in a full fight setting is completely different than any other video I've ever trained for before. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is full thing now. What Master DJ just said is now we're going full sparring. That was only offense and defense. Not even the full thing. I am definitely not confident going into this sparring with Cole because going from just doing offense or defense is going to be completely different than going all out on each other. Okay, Chumbe, ready! Let's make it clean and go! Here we go, my first real round of sparring and I already got one point, two points against me. I connected nothing, that's three, four points against me. You can see how quickly these points add up and after being gassed from the first round, I really couldn't keep up with Cole on this second round. He was just too fast for me and I really just tried to get out of the way. Ah. Woo. He even landed an ax kick on my head there and I just kind of took it. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, good. 30 Woo. second break, 30 seconds. You got hit hard. I'm dying. <laughs> Woo. Try to find your, with him, try to find your distance. A lot of your stuff is a little short right now, right? There's a little, you're like your little, like little shallow and stuff, little shallow and stuff. A little stubby legs? Yeah, 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 yeah. So try to get like, when you're kicking, try to get like motion with the kick then. Cause if you just go long right away, then he's just gonna jam you. Yeah, yeah. Right? <gasps> okay, be better. Let's get it, be urgent, be urgent, be fast, go!
gap. And so I tried coming out of the gate swinging and closing those gaps like Master DJ had recommended, but Cole just had so much reach on me. My goal was to backpedal until I could try to find an opening, but I just kept getting kicked in the head instead. Three, two, one, come on. Good, turkey about. Okay, 30 second break again, ready to go. Oh, I'm gonna fill up now. Woo! Woo! Oh, I am so gassed. I got, like I can't even breathe. Woo! So that's what it means to be a gold medalist. Oh my God. I have probably 50 pounds on it. And I feel like I'm a little baby turtle getting defeated by Master Splinter. And after a quick sip of water, we're back in it for round three. Be fast, be urgent, ready, go! This is where I tried to gas everything out. All of my energy I'm putting into round three, which wasn't too much left. I tried throwing as many correct kicks as possible, but it was really hard to work around Cole just because he was so much faster than me. And as Cole came in for one final assault, I tried to stop him with a spinning back kick. Whoa. <laughs> that was me hitting him a little bit low. This is why I really say always wear a cup when you spar. Out by technicality, this guy. Luckily, Cole's a champion here. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Trust me. That happens like, that's probably the 2,000th time this happened to me, maybe more. Oh, I'm buying you a cup by the end of this week. I'm gonna get you a cup. I really felt bad about that, but it's finally time to end the day. Hi, Quad, you guys are dismissed. So I have to do all of that again on Sunday with multiple people, with bigger people. Saturday, tomorrow, there's a very special training before we get into Sunday. Oh, we still have to have dinner. I really just wanted a shower and a nap. And tonight's dinner is the same exact thing that I had for breakfast. The meatballs with a bit of sauce, green onions for the cake and rice. Tonight's session really put things into perspective for what's going to happen on Sunday. So tomorrow, Saturday, I have a very, special day plan, not only for food, but for training. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, my friends. It is Saturday. I am absolutely wrecked. So here's how today's gonna go. Coffee and recovery. And recovery involves touching grass. After all of the training we've done all week, after all the meal prep we have done, relaxation and recovery are hyper important. Everyone needs a break every once in a while. You can't go 100% all the time. So today I enjoyed a day out, grabbing ourselves some boba, one of my favorite things to have. I know it's not really part of the diet plan, but sometimes you have to deviate to keep yourself sane. We also bought a brand new bed today. This is going to help with recovery because sleep is incredibly important. Important. We found a place that served food on top of rice. This was a Korean inspired rice bowl restaurant that was pretty dang good. We also found a bath bomb in the shape of a mystery box from Mario. When you cut this thing open, you're greeted by one of the mushrooms. Of course, this is going to lead to the bath scene. Every anime ever has a hot tub scene, but in this case, I'm adding in my bath bomb along with some Epsom salt that has quite a bit of magnesium to help with recovery. So I kicked back, grabbed my tablet, and watched this ad for my brand new Patreon. I'm launching this Patreon because I would love your guys' help to continue doing what we're doing on the channel. These videos take a long time to make, and in this one in particular for Jujutsu Kaisen, I spent over a month of planning, shooting, and editing. If you want to support the channel directly, you can do it for just a dollar a month, and there's extra tiers for different perks. Thank you for letting me do what I get to do and share this adventure with you. Good morning, my friends. Yesterday was very necessary. I don't feel nearly as sore as the previous day, but today is belt ceremony day, and for that, I have to actually earn it. So let's have an awesome breakfast and get today done, because this UG diet, this UG diet's killing me. Now breakfast is going to be the last of the meatballs. I have eight meatballs left, so I'm gonna be making what has quickly become one of my favorite ones, and that's gonna be a chicken meatball oyakudon, kind of. Now an oyakudon is technically a chicken, egg, and rice bowl, and I don't wanna take away from that because I love the original, but this is a way of just reusing some of our leftover ingredients. My biggest obstacle was realistically making meal prep that you'd want to use in various ways all week which 
admittedly has been very difficult. This is what I do full time. And I know how hard it was for me to do all of this amongst all the training and everything else. So I can only imagine how difficult it might be for you to do any of this. I really hope if you've taken away anything from this video this far in, it's to have a little bit of fun and creativity with everything that you do. I'm gonna cover this and let it steam for just a couple of minutes to kind of cook those eggs just a little bit. Here is 300 grams of microwave rice that I had left over. Oh, look at how like silky this looks. Admittedly, it's beautiful and rich and silky, but it doesn't hold its shape like a traditional oyakudon would, but that's okay because this still looks amazing. Top it off with some sesame seed or whatever else you got. There it is. Meatball oyakudon. Really easy to throw together, especially for leftovers, especially for breakfast. If you have seven minutes in the morning, you can make this. This entire meal comes out to 790 calories, 60 grams of protein, 21 grams of fat, and around 90 grams of carbs. Cheers. Mm, this is still really good. I'm only having two real meals today. This one before my training today, and then we're gonna have a very special meal afterwards. I'll see you guys there. I'm gonna get so beat. We just pulled up to the school and we have about an hour before I have to start my training session for my belt. Now, to start things off, I'm gonna have a banana as my pre-workout, but to give me extra power, I had an extra chocolate cursed finger laying around from my anime expo video where I handed these out to a bunch of Jujutsu Kaisen cosplayers. So like Saitama, I really just need a banana before this. And then I'm gonna have a bunch of sugar with this chocolate finger. So it's gonna be like a chocolate banana. Cheers. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I mentally prepared myself for what's to come because today is going to be testing day. I have to fight a bunch of people and I really hope the chocolate banana gives me as much energy as possible. As soon as I walked in, I saw all of the students geared up and ready to go. And Master DJ explained exactly what I have to do for this belt. So Grant will be fighting him then. Um, Connor's gonna spar with them and then Cole's gonna spar with them too at the end. King of bow, intensity. Face me, bow, intensity. Face this ball as you bow. We're gonna say good luck, King of Bow. Yes, all right. And now it was time to begin my very own belt ceremony. This is to get my white belt. I had to show off a few kicks that I had learned throughout the week with the different variations thrown in, but I really think that this was a way to gas me out before the fight actually started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, good job. All right, switch it. Other leg, ready, go. I have to make sure that I'm not too tired for the fight, but I also want to put forth my very best effort in making sure that I nail all of these kicks. I still struggled to make these kicks look really good, but I feel like I did improve a little bit throughout the week. I even had to throw down a combo I've never done before. I didn't know where I was going with that one. <laughs> this combo was super fun to do and I wanted to do it a few times, but we had to do one more to completely gas me out. Yeah! <laughs> but we can't just work the legs. Master DJ decided it was a good idea for me to also work out my upper body with just a few push-ups to make sure that that was also nice and sore. Let's go! This entire section got myself super pumped up and I was ready to go. And while I was getting ready, the black belts I would be fighting later would show off their stuff, starting with Grant. Let's go, Grant! Get it, bud. Get it! Whoa! Woo! Let's go! And then it was Connor's turn. And finally, it was Cole's turn. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in the corner placing all of my gear on in a very methodical way. The rest of the class did some warm ups to get everybody really excited. I got some help from another coach dad, and then it was time for the black belts to go at it. I didn't expect them to start fighting, but it was really cool to see. This was Cole up against Grant, and seeing how fast they could react and kick against each other was really intimidating. Three, two, one. Come on, good. Next up was Cole and Connor. These two went at it for a full minute. And after their round was done, it was finally time for me to get in there. Let's go, Grant. I'm not ready for this. I had to go up against Grant first, and I was not prepared. All right. Okay, tricking about Chunbi. All right, Chef PK, let's go. Ready, go. I didn't know what to expect with Grant because I had never come up against him before. I really just tried to make sure that I could try to read some of his attacks. I felt like I was dodging okay and trying to throw a few kicks, but I always just came up a little bit short with my stumpy tree legs. And that's when Grant gave me a good one right to the head. That one felt really good. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Come on, let's go. Good job. You know what they say, you always have a plan until you get kicked in the head. That was round one and I'm going straight into round two, this time against Connor. Spicy, it should be. Ready, go. We started off and Connor was a little more hesitant coming into this, but then all of a sudden he kind of exploded. I felt like he started to warm up and I really was trying to just keep up with him. And then I got another kick to the head, but it's fine because I'm basically Treebeard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. I didn't mean to hit you that hard. You're good. He was really nice about hitting me in the head, so I didn't mind it too much. But that was two rounds in a row with fresh opponents, and now it's time to go against Cole, the gold medalist who I've been training with all week. This is the final round. Hey, round three, ready? Go! Ah. No. You know how I said I was training with Cole all week? It really didn't matter. With me being so tired and Cole being fresh and a gold medalist who's training for the Olympics, I had no idea how to defend against him. I really was just trying to survive and even that was very difficult. After hitting the ground a couple of times, I had a takedown on Cole, which felt really bad. And as I threw a couple of wild kicks to end it, Cole came right back in with another flurry of kicks, one of them knocking me straight in the head, which I probably deserved. Three. Two, one, come on, I saw the cut, let's go. Go away, go away, go away. This was by far one of the hardest anime diets I have ever done. I'm just glad I was able to stay in the ring for that full minute with each of those black belts, but now I have to finish my testing, and that included some board breaking. After a quick wardrobe change from Master DJ, I had to do a technique board break and a power board Ready? break. Ready, break, Yes, good job. Boom. Okay. Three. Fight! One, six! Easy. Good job, man. Having completed my board breaks, I now get to be awarded with the best part. Now he's officially a white belt, I'm man. A, I have to do all of that for my white belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's your official white belt, your official uniform. Thank you so much. Yes. You now, you can now start as a student. After all that. <laughs> now, yeah, now, now you can finally start, right? Yes. <laughs> it was an absolute honor to be able to be around this amazing community, get my white belt certificate, which I think they just give you if you sign up, but I did all of this anyways. One of the students had given me some really cool friendship bracelets. And instead of heading home and having my own meal and kind of just doing my own thing for dinner, I surprised everyone with a huge plate of mochi, which is one of Gojo's favorites. And it seemed to be a favorite of everyone here. But I also decided to throw a pizza party with everyone. Because let's be real here, food is so much better around your friends. Thank you to Master DJ and Cole for running me through this week and to all the new friends I met at US World Class Taekwondo. Being able to share my love for food and anime with everyone here was truly a blessing and I don't think I'll ever take that for granted. For those of you who are still here, thank you so much for staying to the end. If you want to support the channel directly so I can keep doing videos like this, head to the Patreon down below. My name is Chef PK and remember, keep playing with your food. He didn't even <laughs> need to put it on my back.